About a month ago, we explored Fidata's first ever Agent UI, a powerful platform that makes building and deploying autonomous AI agents effortless. This open source and local solution allows you to easily create multi-agent systems with advanced features like memory, knowledge, tools, and reasoning capabilities. With Fidata's Agent UI, you can construct various autonomous agents to handle tasks independently from complex workflows to collaborative efforts. The platform ensures seamless deployment and enables your agents to work efficiently across multiple scenarios. With Fidata's agents, you have blazing fast performance where it's 70% faster in terms of its memory and knowledge retrieval. You have an extensive toolkit where you can access 100 plus integrated tools. You have reasoning capabilities from advanced reasoning for smarter agents to multi-agent collaboration where you can build agents that can work together seamlessly. And the best part is you have comprehensive monitoring where they have built-in monitoring tools and intuitive agents to help you track everything. You can find all the code that we're going to be using in today's video in the description below. Just take a look at the Fidata cookbook link, which contains more examples of building agents with any LM. Check it out using all of those links and also give their repository a star. Just to give you a good idea of the types of agents you can create, just go over to their documentation where you can see the different types of examples of agents from web search all the way to vision agents. You have a lot of flexibility, not just that there's a lot of tools that have lots of different functionalities that can give agents the ability to execute and interact with external systems. You can see all the different toolkits that have been integrated with this beautiful framework from searching the web, running SQL queries, sending emails, or even calling APIs. And now essentially today, what we're going to be doing is showcasing how you can easily build these agents with the FIDATA framework. This is where we're going to be showcasing how they utilize abilities like memory, knowledge integration, tool usage, and reasoning for you to easily automate anything. And with FIDATA agents, you can easily build, deploy, and manage these agents quite effortlessly with a really nice user interface that they provide with the agent UI. So now that we have better understood the capabilities of FIDATA, we're going to use this framework to help us create these autonomous AI agents so that we can build and deploy them in our own manner. So go ahead and first install the prerequisites. You need to make sure that you have Git installed. This is going to be used to help us clone the repository onto our local machine. Make sure you have Python installed as a programming language. We're going to use pip to also install the packages. So make sure you have this installed. And VS Code is quite optional. This is going to be the IDE that I'm going to be using to help execute and build our agents. I'll leave all the links in the description below. But what I want you guys to do first is head over to the GitHub repository, click on copy to clipboard the link. And I want you guys to scroll all the way to the bottom. And I want you guys to go ahead and install FIDATA's framework onto your machine. To do so, what you want to do is type in git clone and then paste in the link and click enter. This will start cloning the repository onto your computer. Once the repo has been cloned, open it up within your code editor or your IDE. And what you can do is head over to the scripts and you can then go over to Agent 101. Now go over to the readme. You can actually open this up if you're on VS Code as a preview so that it's easily viewable. And what we're going to be doing now is starting off by creating and activating our virtual environment. So go ahead, click on these three dots, click on terminal, click on new terminal. And we're going to start off by creating our virtual environment. Then you want to click on this drop down menu. And if you're on Windows, open up the Ubuntu terminal. And we're going to go ahead, copy this, and we're going to be pasting it into our terminal. This is going to activate and create the virtual environment. And the reason why you want to do this is because you want to isolate the dependency in a secured environment. Then you want to go ahead and set your API key. Now, this is optional for using OpenAI as a provider. You can either use Olama as well so that you can use a free local model instead. In this case, we're going to be creating GPT-4 Omni agents. So go ahead and set your API key for OpenAI. After API key is set, you can then install the libraries. So go ahead, copy this command, and then simply paste it in. And this will install all the necessary packages for you to run the various agents. So now that we have installed the libraries, we're going to start off by creating and deploying 
our agents. Now, these are simple agents that we're going to be able to configure and deploy with FiData, but it's going to give you a good idea as to how you can build and deploy this. And this is where I'm going to be handing it off to Ashpreet, who is the creator of this framework. He's a developer who has developed FiData to what it is today. And we're going to now showcase what we can actually do with these agents and how you can deploy it on the web. So the first part is an agent with just some simple tools. The web search agent is an agent that has access to the DuckDuckGo toolkit so it can pull news and uh, search DuckDuckGo for real-time information. So we create the agent by importing the agent class from Phi agent. We give the agent a name, we give it a role, and then we give it a set of instructions, like always include sources in your answers. We also tell it to give us the answer in markdown format, and then we add date time into the instructions so it knows uh, that, so it's not like limited by the uh, knowledge cutoff of its training data. And then finally, we're gonna say show tool calls are true as well, because we wanna see what kind of tools it's running. So after we've done that, we'll run our web search agent and see what it does. So this web agent, we, we asked about write a report on the US election, it'll do a new search and then give us a report about the US election. It's gonna talk about some key issues and it's gonna summarize basically all the links it's gonna get and give us a result with that. Great starting point for us. Uh, one thing which I wanna showcase is that we have this setting called debug mode as true. So finally it is a very transparent library. We don't do anything behind the scenes. You can run the web search agent, any agent with debug logs enabled, and you can see what's happening behind the scenes. We first, we add the functions which are from the toolkit to the model. We create the system message, which is a combination of role and the instructions which we have. We can see exactly that the date time is added. And then we send a user message, then the assistant responds that, hey, run this tool call for me. We capture some metrics, which is my favorite piece of it. And uh, then once the tool call comes in, we run that tool for the agent and then send all the information back. So we send the system message, user message, the assistant tool call, um, the tool call results, and then return the assistant's response in a neatly formatted manner. So let's go on to uh, some other agents and see what's happening behind the scenes. Now let's, uh, next agent, which I really like is the finance agent that can query the Yahoo Finance API to pull in financial information. So this agent, uh, so the Yahoo Finance API and toolkit, it's again, a free API. So we do run into rate limiting errors time to time. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna work on this demo, so give it a try. The part which I really wanna highlight is how it can, how we can tell, okay, use data uh, tables to display data and it follows that as well. So let's run the finance agent for us and see what it does. So we ran the finance agent and debug logs are enabled and we see that it's first sending the system message, it's running the get analyst recommendations, capturing the metrics and then giving us the result in a neatly uh, formatted manner, which I absolutely love. And then it's gonna give us a recommendation on what's happening uh, based on the tool call result it ran. So that's like a very basic starting point for an agent. The next one agent which I wanna talk about is the retrieval augmented generation agent. So normally what happens is in traditional RAG, uh, we store information in a vector DB and uh, given the user's query, we'll turn it into an embedding and do a semantic search. But with a RAG agent, the agent, we give it a tool and we tell it, that, okay, you have access to this knowledge base. You have a tool to search your knowledge base, search it for whatever you need to answer the question. Okay, now let's test it out. Uh, I want to kick this off first because it's going to take a minute to load the knowledge base. I'm going to show all the process step by step. Uh, so let's kick this off and then we're going to talk through what's happening behind the scenes. So with this rack agent, the first thing which we're going to do is we're going to give this agent a knowledge base. This knowledge base is a PDF URL knowledge base. Uh, we can do a knowledge base with text, text documents, uh, docx, web pages, regular PDF stored locally, but this is a PDF URL, which reads a PDF from a URL and stores it in LandCB and uses the vector search type to retrieve information at query time. When we give it a knowledge base, it automatically adds a tool to search knowledge base. And then we also give it a tool to uh, read chat history if it needs to. And then we ask this question. So over here, we see that it created that knowledge base 
added 14 documents. So if we open this up, it'll probably have 14 pages and each page became a document. Loaded up the knowledge base. Then when we asked the question, it searched the knowledge base for that particular thing. Now you can see it didn't uh, search for how do I make it, just search for like this, the recipe for this item which we were asking. This is great because in case the user like writes a paragraph, we don't really wanna be searching for that entire thing, uh, you know, and this ends up with better search results. It also gives the agent the ability to search for like four or five different things at the same time to answer the question. So that's a rag agent to start with. Now let's do something a little more interesting. And we're gonna put two of our agents and we're gonna make an agent team with it so it can answer questions and it can like kind of like delegate tasks to an agent to answer questions. So we're gonna also test out the agent UI with it. So open up this file, agent UI. And we'll see that we have the web agent and a finance agent. And then we're gonna create an agent team. This agent team, let's give it the model as well. This agent team has uh, access, has a team of web and finance agent. And then so that it can delegate tasks to either of the agents to answer questions. With these agents, we're also giving them storage, meaning these sessions which we're gonna have with these agents, they're stored in a local SQLite DB. So this is a SQL agent storage, which we're adding to all of the agents, which means the conversations which we're gonna have with this agent, they're stored completely locally. Now, this is the interesting bit about the agent uh, UI. All this data is being stored completely locally. Nothing is sent to file data or outside your machine. Okay, now let's give it a try. To use the agent UI, first we're going to authenticate with file data. So this is simply to tell FireData uh, that I'm going to serve this playground, uh, this UI at locally, and this is my account, help me connect to it. FireData shows no information from your agents over there. Next, let's run the agent UI file, which creates a playground which with these three agents and then serves them locally. Another thing which I'm gonna do is, I'm actually going to set debug mode as true because I kinda of wanna see all the logs happening behind the scenes. So let's run the agent UI, and it's gonna create the endpoint, and then it's say, go to this URL, um, and over here, it's gonna to connect to it, and we'll be able to see that it can, we can chat with the three of our agents to um, you know, see what's happening. So let's first chat with the finance agent. With the finance agent, we'll ask, uh, or you know, just simple, what's the stock price for NVIDIA and Tesla? It's gonna run, hopefully it's gonna run two tool calls and give us the stock price as a table because that's what we've asked of it. Then next, I'm gonna check the agent team. So I'm gonna ask, again, the same question, what's the stock price of NVIDIA and Tesla? And in this case, what it's going to do, it's going to delegate the task to the finance agent and then get the result to us. So let's see what's happening behind the scenes. So we're seeing full debug logs that are happening here. Everything is stored locally. Nothing is with FIDATA. And we'll see it's gonna transfer the task to the finance agent and then give us the result as expected. The agent team does not have the instruction to show uh, data and in tables, so it doesn't show that. And that's about it for today's video on FIDATA. This is how you can easily build these various AI agents with memory, knowledge, tools, and reasoning to help you in various ways. Hope you found this video to be really helpful. Go ahead to the FIDATA repo and give this a star if you haven't already. They have done a great job in developing such a great framework, so huge respects to the creators behind this project. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon. Follow me on Twitter so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with whatever is happening in the world of AI. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.